Yeah, I mean, I'm always excited to hear what's being done at Coinbase. I'm a big Coinbase fan. I did a recent video about yeah. glorious Coinbase because, you know, certainly in the light of Mt. Gox and all of that, it's it's just been great to see some sort of rock-solid presence in the United States. But, uh, you know, we we spoke a little bit earlier about, about what you're up to, but it, it sounds like mostly right now you're concerned about security. Yeah, I mean, we're always concerned about security. One thing... Um, like the reason why I joined Coinbase is because I, I realized Coinbase was doing something very important for Bitcoin. And whatever is good for Bitcoin is good for Litecoin. That's true. Bitcoin is kind of blazing the trail and Litecoin is just falling behind you know, and reaping the advantage of Bitcoin and also doing its own thing. Um, but so I'm working on, I worked at, I'm working at Coinbase. Um, I've been trying to improve um, security. So uh, one of the... The two, two security issues we have is um, kind of securing the customer's funds and securing our own funds, yeah. right? So um, with securing our own, fu our own funds, we have to do, we use cold storage and we use um, uh, like MMN keys so it's geographically spread out so there's no um, risk. So it's not like someone can um, storm our office and steal all the, all the funds, right? Because we don't have all the keys. Right. So that that makes it safe, um, and then. So that's basically a multi-signature wallet. Is that would be the term, or is that MMM kind of, is actually kind of. a different? It's, it's a little bit different. It's where, um, let's say you have, um, let's say it's like five of ten, for example. Right. That means you have ten people oh, spread right, over the right. world that have keys to have like a share. Shamir secret. There we go. That's what right. we that's use. What we're using. So they have shares. So if five of them come together and take their shares and combine them, they can get a private key out of them. Right, right, right. So is that, is that the reason why I have to wait four days before I can get the bitcoins because they have no, to go through the process? Reason, no, that's <laughs> not the reason. No, I'm that's just asking about yeah. that's the legacy. Oh, that's, 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 that's because you know, of the, I'm a non-technical perspective, yeah. you know. That's because of the banking um, issues. So um, also because of risk and fraud. Mm -hmm. So we are Coinbase is like right between a. Irreversible currency, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and a reversible one, which is the U.S. dollar. Yes. All right. So, if you said you wanted to buy Bitcoins, we're gonna do a ACH uh, debit on your bank account. Yes. And that takes like three or four days. Right. So before the money gets to us, mm -hmm. we can't give you Bitcoins yet. Okay. So you can basically, you're waiting. Right with it. Okay. It's right. the same as if you hand someone a check. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have, have to wait for it to clear. Right exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, but then we'll, we'll, the good thing about Coinbase is we'll give you the price that we agreed on. Yeah, you lock right? in that it's price. It's not when the check clears, it's when actually we give you the, the amount of Bitcoins we agreed on. Okay. Um, and even then, even if we, after we get the money, fraudsters can still like reverse it, which is, which yeah. is, which sucks. So that's why we have a lot of canceled transactions that mm -hmm. people are upset about because we um, algorithmically determined that this user is high risk. Yeah. And we have to cancel the transaction because even if we get mm -hmm. the money, it's possible that you can reverse that after okay. you get the big uh, Can okay. you speak about what causes somebody to be high risk? Because some of my friends, you know, I referred them to Coinbase yeah. and they got their, they bought some Bitcoins and they were flagged as high risk. Yeah. And then it was reversed and the price went up and then they're upset. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, so one thing about that is, uh -huh. yeah, if the, if the transaction was reversed due to high risk and mm -hmm. the price goes up, they're upset. They complain about yes. it on Reddit. <laughs> But what if the reverse happens, which happens after the I I mean uh -huh. I can attest to that. The reverse Actually, happens probably a lot too. in the last few months more than fifty percent. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. When the price goes down, yeah. we still cancel the transaction. We don't care what, what happens. But can, can you speak what causes sure. somebody to be like uh, why was my friend flagged as high risk? Because he's a froster, maybe. No. Well, I don't think he is. <laughs> I, can you, uh, yeah, well. I can't tell you I can't tell you too much because mm -hmm. whatever I tell you, mm -hmm. scammers will yeah, we'll use it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, uh -huh. we understand. For uh -huh. So uh, mm -hmm. there's various signals that we use to determine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not 100 percent, obviously. It's way yeah. off from 100%. yeah. Because I know my friends are but, is not a far from fraud, yeah. so they wouldn't try but to. We, yeah. we try to be. Um, uh -huh. We try to be overly cautious mm -hmm. um, because it hurts. It hurts. It hurts our bottom line, right? We make one percent off of a transaction. Sure. So if if there's more than one percent of bitcoins. Mm -hmm are scammed, then we lose money, mm -hmm. right? So we have, to, we have to keep fraud rate below 1%, so we have to be extra extra cautious. Mm -hmm. um, so if if a legitimate user has got their transaction canceled due to high risk, 
they can contact our customer support and try to convince us that they're not fraudsters. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've mm -hmm. seen it work. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, if they manage to convince us, we actually um, push that transaction through at the original price. Mm -hmm. Now, so, I, I know that we are in the U.S., so we can get the bitcoins from uh, Coinbase. Well, what about people outside the U.S.? Are they able to get in touch with the Coinbase and buy? Bitcoins from you guys also? Right now, we only support U.S. banks mm -hmm. because we, we're doing ACH um, uh, debits. Yeah. Right. So you need a U.S. bank account. Okay. Um, international customers can use our wallet service. Right. They can use Coinbase wallets. They can use Coinbase wallets to pay for merchants. Okay. But they're not able to purchase to, bitcoins directly from Coinbase. Yeah. In order to buy and sell, you need. If, a, if they have an American bank account, they can. So okay. I have friends overseas buying bitcoins. But the, with, American with their American bank, bank account. Yeah. Okay. Right. And okay. the ACH isn't that? That's a Federal Reserve branch, right? The, the actual ACH, the American Clearinghouse. Um, Strangely, they clear almost all the checks. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. The Federal Reserve does do <laughs> so all the it, it, it's, it's clearing. Uh, the yeah. legacy banking is still. And and do you guys have? Do you get nervous if someone say has a Coinbase account and they're going to slap over a thousand bitcoins just using a quick login password? Do you do you monitor those transactions any more so than you would my one dollar transactions? Um, so an internal Coinbase transaction. Yes. So what do you mean? Like well, if, if someone uh, tries to send. Like a thousand bitcoins outside of Coinbase? I can log on to my Coinbase account mm -hmm. with my password on my home computer, right? And then I could send an enormous amount of money yeah. inside the Coinbase system, you know, instantly. Yeah. Is that a, a concern at all? Or? Well, if it's, I mean, if it's fraudulent, it, it's inside the Coinbase system, we, there's something we can do about it, right? But if it's fraudulent and it's sent outside our control, then there's not much we can do right, about it. Right. So we, we do recommend. Um, users with a high balance to make sure they have two-factor, um, like a phone or a Google Authenticator, where when you log in or, or when you send bitcoins, that you would add, we would ask you for a two-factor token to make sure you are who you like, to make sure not to have right, your right. just stole your password. Right. So this no, is something that, that great, something that I worked on where by default. If you try to send more than hundred dollars a day out of Coinbase, we'll ask you for a two-factor token. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. It's made me more comfortable. Holding yeah, that I, I like that two-factor authentication. Also, what other security features that uh, are you working on to secure it even more? Anything um, else, or is it under wraps? I mean, there's there's various things we're working on. I mean, even with uh, two-factor, mm -hmm. it's not immune to hacking. Right, so one of the um, the most dangerous hacks right now are phishing attempts, right? Where you get sent an email to a link. If someone sends a hacker sends you an email, like a scary email saying um, there's something wrong with your account, you might lose your coins, please log in, click on this link. You click on this link and it takes you to coinbass.com instead of coinbase.com, right. right? And then it looks exactly like Coinbase. Insert your phone number. Right? Yeah, phone number, yeah. username, password. And also two-factor token, right? So you type it in, thinking that you're logging into Coinbase. In reality, you're not. Um, they can instantly turn around and resend that two-factor token. Exactly. If they're if they're really good, they can instantly turn around and so what, log what, in themselves as so, you. Okay. So what can a user do when they receive an email from a, from a Coinbase? <laughs> How do they know that that's an authentic email coming from you guys and not? Some well, the basic um, security. Uh, measure is to never click on links from emails okay. because you, like, you never know where you're downloading or okay. where you're going. You can download like a virus to your computer. So if you get an, an email from Coinbase, um, just go directly to Coinbase.com from your website. Oh, okay. Right. Another thing that I've recommended friends to do is to use um, uh, password uh, tools like Last pass or one password that or key lets pass. you or keep pass that lets you generate very complicated very complicated passwords that are unique yeah. to different sites and also those um, they have extensions where they will pre-fill your username password on sites yeah and if the if the URL is wrong they won't pre-fill. Oh, so ah. that's a clear indication that you're on a phishing ah, site. That's great. Because they're like, why is it not pre-filling? 
like you will never have to copy and paste or type in the password into a random website right, right. because they will know that the URL is wrong and they will pre it. Okay, that's good. I hadn't heard because I know I know that uh, with KeyPass they recommend that um, that you hit you know copy and paste and don't even type in. So you can just mouse over the. Uh, the website name that you have in KeyPass, uh, the, the, key, the password manager, yep. and you just Copy hit Control C, Control V. But that's that's dangerous too because you could paste it into the phishing website. Oh, you can. So okay. yeah, because you don't know, right? So with I use LastPass personally, and yeah. I think it's really good. I have two factor on my LastPass with a strong password. Okay. Can you so, do something like set up LastPass on a computer that's not online? So um, I would say Coinbase.com, put in my password. There, they do have offline. Because that would add one extra level of because you know, the key yeah. loggers and all that. Yeah, in terms of security, there's various things we can do with two-factor. Right, right now, two-factor is is good, but it doesn't. It's not 100% secure because we have issues where people um, they they manage to steal your username, and password from like a key logger, let's say, and then they figure out um, your cell phone provider. They call your cell phone provider and say, I want to request a change number or forward all calls to something else or forward all SMSs. Forward all calls. Yeah, and then they manage to do some, they use social engineering to trick the customer service reps to do it. I didn't think about the forward all calls. <laughs> yeah, so then even with uh, two factor, you can get screwed because even though you have physically have your device, they forwarded all of the right, SMS right. or calls. Right. I forgot about that, but I haven't seen that in like 20 years. <laughs> Would uh, apps like Google Authenticator, where it's it's on an app, uh, yeah. was that more secure than? It's, that's more secure because uh -huh. it's an app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're we're thinking of different ways to make things more secure, where um, you have to physically have the device, or maybe like a hardware token. So there's various things to make things more secure. It also makes it harder for the user. More cumbersome. Would you have a relationship with a company like Trezor or even possibly? Yeah. 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 I'm waiting for them to release their devices. I know. <laughs> we are all waiting for that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. It'll be interesting where we can take it from here. Because with with bank accounts, um, my password to my bank account is six characters. It's like a word or like two. And it looks like a right? password. <laughs> Yeah, and it doesn't matter because you log into my bank account. There's not much you can do that right. you can't reverse. Right. So, but with Bitcoin um, websites, whoever gets in, they can steal everything unless you're really locked down. Yeah, I mean that is the so. one instance where legacy banking just wins hands down. Everything else, you know, yeah, it's I put my money yeah. in the bank. I sleep very well at night. Yeah. But unfortunately, I, I have no other advantage. Bitcoin offers a billion advantages. But that security, that one line of security is going to be the discussion for the next few years. Yeah, like we tell people we keep up to like 97, 98% of our coins in cold storage. And you have and Andreas he, come in yeah, and, yeah. and pull some files. He, he moved 10% of our coins. Wow. And we, we moved it for him. It's like randomly picked 10% of our coins. I did, you know, the, the, what I read about that didn't mention that it was 10%. I got the feeling it's kind of a small... Yeah, he said one account, so I, a random account, so I didn't know that it was that, that much. Though. Well, that random account had 10% of the funds. So, That's yeah. awesome. So we okay. moved that for it. This has been great. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you said it because then now I, I feel a lot better about, uh, you know, after what Andreas uh, Antonopoulos said about doing the security audit for you guys. After so they that. ended up moving almost all of your funds in that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish that was my account they were randomly. Yeah, that was your account they yeah. moved. My 10 mil of it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry you only had 10%. Uh, I'm up at around 11.5. <laughs> so, so having like 97% of points in cold storage is great. Yeah. But Smart. one problem is people don't realize um, even though we have all this in cold storage, you still have to secure your own keys, right? If someone managed to log in as you and has your username, password, and your two-factor token, and from from our all, from our point of view, he is you because he has yeah. all your all your credentials, yeah. all your information. So if he like steals all your money, we can't really reimburse you, right? If we reimburse everyone who yeah. had this happen to them, we'd, we'd be bankrupt. Yeah. So then they feel like. They got lied to because right. we so have so much huge yeah. incentive for you so guys to make this more idiot. Yeah, so there's like I said, there's two parts. There's securing our coins, which we're doing with 97% cold storage, and it's securing the user part, where making it really hard for a user to get. Hacked.
Now, if you had just simply insisted that everybody use Google Authenticator, are you eliminating a lot of problems or not? Um, yes, we will be eliminating some of them. I would think so too. Um, the reason why we're not doing it is because SMS is so easy for people. Like, we, we kind of want to support people that don't have smartphones. Right. So it leaves us. Yeah, so that, that's increasingly thinking, smaller and so small smaller and number of people. We're thinking ways to make it so that people who are sick who want you're doing a significant percentage of transactions via SMS. Is there um, any way to measure it? Or? The we we have measurements of how much we do. I'm surprised. SMS. I'm really surprised. No, I'm, I'm talking about um, people who want to log in with uh, with a two factor on a like a number phone. Right, right. right. I'm, don't surprised. Have, I'm surprised. Yeah. I mean, there's there's still a lot of people who, who don't have smartphones. <laughs> well, any final thoughts, uh, James? No. Thank you for putting okay. this together. I All mean, right. yeah, this thank has you. been great. Yeah, because they're about to start, and I know that the and background it's great noise. to meet the mystery man behind the camera. He's <laughs> hiding right now. Hi. It's <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> So, uh, thanks, guys, for joining us. Uh, did you? Yeah, I'm focusing. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for uh, joining us on this uh, video presentation, and uh, thanks to Charter Lee for taking Thank the you. time out here to help clarify this uh, security issue and help us secure our wallets. Okay. So, any last words? No. To your audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Cool.